Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's um, Monday, July 15th. So I mean, I'm here on a Monday. It is the afternoon, so um, my morning filled up, but I can still come today. So let's see. This past week was really, really busy with family things. We had um, my cousin got married on Saturday, and so my parents were staying at my house for a few days, and we had lots of um, traveling and <clears throat> I went to San Diego one of the days for a bridal shower, and that's three hours each way. I didn't get to stitch on the way back, but not on not on the way home because, or on the way there, I got to stitch not on the way back because um, it was dark already by the time we were on our way home. But I do have a little bit of stitching to show. Um, not some days I didn't get anything done, but there were. With the way I have things organized, I had at least one day on everything I planned on, even if I'd planned on two or three, you know, days, but it's kind of the way it is in the summertime. So, first thing I was planning to work on was Cherry Kitten by, I don't think I said last time, this is by Artisy, and here's the actual, Oh man, I think that's the wrong, yeah, that's the wrong binder. Uno momento, por favor. Here we go. This is kind of what mine will look like. Um, this is the actual cover of mine because I'm doing the no background version with some pretty pull stitches fabric. So this is by Artisy Cross Stitch and Dragon Shades. Hey, look at that. I put the sticker right here so that I would always know what I'm using. So it's pull stitches, dragon shades. No, no, dragon shades is, is the uh, style. It's Cosmos. That's the actual name, Cosmos. So I only got one day on this instead of two or three like I was hoping, but it's better than nothing. So this is what this looked like before. I was kind of hoping to maybe come back to it again, but I never did. So here it is now. And this is the pretty fabric, purples and white and purple. Purple, blue, and white. <sighs> Calm down. <laughs> I'm talking fast because I'm just like, let's get this done. My kids are in the other room watching a show and it's just like busted out. So here we go. I pulled out this lighter brown and there's a good amount of it in here. So I was hoping to make some more significant progress, but that was not to be this week. But <sighs> this technically got touched. Um, so far this year, so it won't be in my arbitrary August lineup, but maybe in subsequent months I'll pull this out again and work on it some more because it is really cute and I want to make a little bit more progress on that. So. so that is Cherry Kitten. And then I started working on a little bit, I did two more days on Quick Stitch Iris for the Tour de France cell in Full Coverage Fanatics where we're stitching the tour and I'm just doing the flat and time trial legs which is the smallest chunk you can kind of go for officially with the challenge. This is by Josephine Wall. It's a quick stitch which means it's been cropped from a full size pattern. So it is fairly small, only four pages. This is what this looked like before. And here it is now. So I finished this diagonal and started on this one. And I have, I had two major days, 2.15 and 2.30. So, and I am stopping immediately on the exact stitch so that um, I can count the next stitch for the next, ch next chunk. Um, so, so far, the few days we've had, and the one today was also a big one, it's 218 today. Um, and all the rest of them are a little bit smaller for me, but <clears throat> the big ones, I need to make sure I get a good amount of stitching time to get the 200 plus ones done. The This last one was while my parents were here, so it actually needed a Friday and Saturday to get that done. But that's what the rest days are for, so I got caught up and posted it, my progress on Saturday. So, there's that. <clears throat> working on this and not hating counting my stitches with the new way of uh, recording them, I 
think I will make this my new focus on a finish because I calculated out and it will take longer than I would have liked to finish it. Um, but if potentially what I could do is every weekend I could give Friday, Saturday, Sunday is counted as a weekend. I could do four weekends, four long weekends every month, work on this. And then midweek, I can work on my family pieces and then other things that I want to work on. If I do that and I aim for 240 stitches for 10 days with two days of buffer, so th then I could do the 240 stitch challenge in Full Coverage Fanatics and finish this in about nine and a half months which is really, really attractive because then I could gift it to my aunt for her birthday next year, which is at the end of the year. So I wouldn't be able to do it for this year for sure, but possibly next year. And I like the idea of giving it to her for her birthday instead of Christmas, but since it's a personal gift and not a family gift. So um, I like that idea and getting that done and gifted. Um, so I think I'm going to try it in September and see if I like it. I don't want to burn myself out. I know I've tried focusing on other full coverage pieces and just, nope, not happening. But there's a lot of pretty colors in here and I'll start to see flower, more flowers happening. So it's possible that I won't mind. Um, it's also possible that I won't like the weekend, weekday situation and I might just give it 10 to 12 days in a big chunk and then the rest of the month I can do the other things. So we'll have to play with that and wait and see. But so far I plugged it in in September and all of my like family stitching that I do every month fell midweek except for Knitting Woman which fell on a weekend. But then I just shifted that in so that I could do it midweek instead because I don't want to have to, I don't want to skip that one. Um, so, so far in September it worked okay and then I can... Just fill in the extra days with fun projects of whatever I want to work on. So we'll take it from there. We'll see how it goes. I'm allowing myself to take a break from that system on for May and August for Stitch Mania and Arbitrary August because those are fun ones to kind of participate in the community and throw your plans out the window and just kind of do something different. So I'm giving myself... So with, with May... But this August and next May and August, I could still finish it before her birthday. So that could be, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So we'll see. We'll see how I feel after I finish the tour challenge and then do it in September. And we'll see if I want to continue doing that. Um, the next thing I worked on was late, uh, Knitting Woman. And this is for my mom. And I didn't actually get to, to work on this while she was here because we were too busy. So... I was supposed to work on this for two days and I only got one. Um, but I'm at a better place with it now, so I think I will enjoy pulling it out more now. When I started working on it, I realized I, I'm not really looking forward to working on it ever. And when I pulled it out again, I realized I think I know why. Because it's hard to count or hard to find all the stitches I want for a particular symbol when they're all spread out. I'm currently doing it cross country. And so I pick a symbol in this one area and then I would just take it however it goes. And for one thing, it's hard to see progress that way because your stitches are scattered all, all over a large area, not necessarily in clumps because it's a full coverage. And so you look at it from stitching session to stitching session and there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, and so, and it was hard to see like, the whole page, did I get everything of that color and then come back and realize, no, I forgot one, like three colors later, I realized I had missed one way back here. So I decided to switch it up and do columns and parking, which I like to do on other full coverage pieces, um, with an adjustment with this piece, particularly on this page at least, it's just kind of a smaller chunk left in the page, so I just would follow the columns with the particular symbol up and then down and then up and then when I got to the end of the page I park it in the next page. So I didn't work in a column and park it in the next column, I just followed it all the way and then parked next. Because it's half stitches you can do it a little bit more freely that way. And 
there weren't that many on each page. So there was one or two colors that I just went ahead and stitched into the second page because there was just a small piece left. But the rest of them, I think I parked three, three colors and I'm on a fourth color, which I'll probably park as well when I'm done with it. So this is what that looked like last time. Hopefully you can see some progress. This is where it's at now with a, these few parked threads. And I have one more on my needle in the back. But that's where it's at now. I worked over in here because this is the first, this is the bottom of this page right here. So I was working on finishing this column and then the color I picked would go up and down and then I'd park it over here in the next page. Um, and so far I really enjoyed it a lot more and I really was kind of wanting to keep stitching this before putting it away because there's a good amount of this next color in here to fill that in more. Um, but I know going forward this will be a lot more fun. And on these pages that don't have as much work, I may do one column and park in the next column like I do on my other pieces, but we'll have to wait and see. I might just do the serpentine half stitches and then park in the next page. So with this piece, that might be the way to go. But it's easy, easier for my mind to track the symbols in a column than just um, all over. So at least when it's kind of confetti like this. So if it's in the background, it's not as hard to just kind of do it, however, but I don't know. I've been struggling right here, so I think that's going to help me um, want to get this out again, because I do want to make progress on it. So that's Knitting Woman, and it will come back out again in September for sure, for two days. Hopefully I can get actual two days on it this time. Um, <clears throat> and then this, let's see, this week... I've also been working on my temperature pieces a little bit. The temperature quilt is behind, but I did get a little bit of time on it. So here's what that one looks like. Mocked up. This year's definitely not a hot, as hot of a summer as the year I did this. This was 2017, I guess, was that year. This is what it looked like before. And here's where it is now. Um, just a little bit of different. I think I finished out these lows. Yesterday I worked and finished the sashing and then stitched that block and these up here and, and that was on my needle too. So I did that. So at least June is finished. So that's good. <clears throat> I'm, I was thinking I'm more caught up on this than I am on watching floss tube. <laughs> so that's something to say. Um, yeah, so there's that. Hopefully I can get, um, more blocks done each time I work on it. This week I don't think will be as manic as last week, so should be able to get caught up a little bit on that. And then my temperature balloons are coming along. I believe this is caught up. I got behind but then was able to get caught up again. So there's what that will generally look like. This is what it looked like before. And here it is now. I most of this diagonal is done, but there's two more here that will be today. I think I can do those. And I actually got started on the basket a little bit. And I am doing my basket in General Arts Apple Cider, which my skein had a decent amount of variegation. So I really am enjoying um, working on that. The called for color is a DMC, but um, if you have a fancy floss um, you want to use, that would be pretty. I've seen people do basket weave stitches and other things, so feel free to personalize that if you'd like. So, And I also got a decent amount done on my travel stitching because we did a lot of traveling. <laughs> and various lessons and driving to wedding things. I wasn't in the wedding, but we went and participated in a few things. So um, this is what my, I'm working on December by the Little House Needleworks. This is the last one I have to do um, in this series and then I'll be done. So that's kind of exciting. This is what it looked like before. And here it is now. So I was able to finish the white in the house, which was kind of my goal last time. And I did the roof and filled in all the windows with that color and then I did this edging the light brown here and in the door and then got started painting 
in the red. Bandana is that color. And it looks a lot darker than I would expect for a Christmas red, but um, I think it's going to be nice. So it'll be more of an understated red, which will, which will be fun. So these, this is 28 count Dove Gray Monaco, which makes it nice and cute and tiny. So I'm not sure. I'll probably have a little less time this week to work on it than I did last week. Um, oh, a lot less probably, but it still gets at least a little bit of time every week, which is good. So going forward into the coming week, I have three days of the Tour de France, which I will be doing my quick stitch iris on those three days. And then um, the other four days, I have slotted to do Villa Mirabilia. So I'm gonna pull her out again and work on this bush because I really wanna get that done so I can move back and focus on the lady. So here's where she is. This is a wrapping paper tube that I just capped with a piece of paper. And here is where she is. This is, it looks kind of brown in the, in the picture, but it is a, a, a light, like dusty olive green. This is linen, 32 count linen. I believe it's like willow maybe. Not sure what's called for. I don't think it was exactly the willow green is called for, but it might be something slightly different, like whatever the LNS had that I, where I kitted this up. Um, so that's where she's at. She's hard to get in the frame because this is a fat half. She's very big, but I will hopefully get some more done on this bush. I was working on this light green, and I still have that on my needle, so I'll for sure finish that out, um, and then see how much more I can do. So that's my goal, is to get her progressing. To I wanna, I wanna get that bush done. And the urn is actually not stitched. I think there's a shadow stitched, but the urn itself is just fabric, which is nice. So there's not that much, a um, lot, of, lot of bush, but um, this part is blank. It's just fabric. So I stitched the bush and the shadow and then like do these lines, which might be beads. I'm not sure. This is a bead chain right here and coming down. Those are beads. Um, but all the light area you see is just fabric, which is kind of nice. So um, so there's that. That's kind of what I'll work on on the off times this, this week. I really think, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I really think I will finish my string on knitting woman before I pull this out because I have got four days on this and um, I think it would be nice to finish the string that I have on my needle and get that parked and so the next time I pull it out I can start fresh and um, have more of that sleeve finished out before I move on. So. I will work on this tomorrow for the first time, knit of Villa Mirabilia. So before I work on that, I will finish my string on Knitting Woman. So I'll show you that again next time. In the meantime, I think that's everything I have to show you. I have not gotten anything in the mail. I'm just kind of stitching away when I have time. And hopefully you are too. Hopefully you're able to find some time to stitch and have fun with that. Um, Hopefully I, this week will be a little bit more normal and I can get some time in on my projects and time to get a little bit more caught up on floss tube. That would be nice. Um, in the meantime, I will, Lord willing, see you next week and happy stitching. Bye.